So we're here today um, alongside artist Chantal Spoppins, and she is from Prague. And so we have people from all over the world that are here at the workshop, and they're working on painting. And today we're painting a beautiful vista in uh, Ponte uh, Sieve. Ponte Sieve. And uh, so we're trying to capture this this morning. And so, hi everybody. This is Ken Brandt. He's an artist. Hey everybody, and welcome to Plain Air Painting number 9, but not necessarily the ninth painting that I uh, painted while we were in Italy. And I don't know if you can tell or not, but on this particular day, it rained. We were there for about a week, and the this is the first time it actually rained on us during the day. And it didn't really rain all day, it was just in the morning period. But um, it did rain, and we did not let that stop us. Uh, we went out there and we painted anyway. Uh, most of us uh, worked in oils, so the rain does not really affect oil painting all that much. Um, yes, your canvas gets wet, but uh, if you have a good canvas made out of linen, um, uh, that's it's, it's not going to affect that at all. So I, we only had. Um, I want to say uh, one person in the group that was using acrylic paint and I believe she had to wait till the rain completely stopped before she could do um, any painting. But those of us with oil, we, uh, we pressed on until it did get to the point where um, the rain started coming down pretty good and uh, we did have to stop for a little bit and then, uh, um, and then just wait. Uh, it, it wasn't very long, I want to say probably about a half hour, and then we went back out there and, uh, and continued painting. So in this particular uh, uh, painting, I'm doing the uh, grape um, fields where uh, we were staying at a winery there in Ponte Sieve, and this is the, uh, the, the grapes, uh, where they were growing the grapes for the wine there and um, uh, the grapes were ripe and ready for picking. In fact, um, I, I was told while we were there that in about uh, two, two weeks after we had left there that they would be picking those grapes for the wine and taking them down to the winery and uh, making the wine with them. And so I was uh, eating a lot of grapes while I was there painting and uh, the grapes were very good. So uh, uh, yeah, I did enjoy that, and uh, you can see the uh, the dark, the darkness, the gray that rolled in uh, that morning, and you'll notice some um, throughout the painting. I took a picture on my phone of how the light was hitting everything uh, initially in the morning, and uh, that is the photo that you see in the corner on the screen. That was the photo that I took prior to the rain coming down. So as the light was changing and the rain was coming through, um, so the clouds were changing quite a bit, there were some dark periods. So I did not want to paint that particular uh, lighting effect that was going on at the time. I wanted to uh, refer back to what I had seen that morning. So I did pull my phone out um, and used that uh, photo as reference to look back on uh, when I was doing the clouds, uh, the sky area, and some of the lighter areas on how it reflected onto the, uh, the hills in the background and the way the light was hitting the, the grapevines in front of me. So every now and then you'll see, like in this particular instance now, I have the phone in front of me. Uh, here I am painting the, the clouds in as I saw them uh, earlier that morning and that's what I wanted in my photo so I was using uh, my phone uh, but then when I when I no longer needed that reference I would uh, I would put that away and I would just continue painting on what was in front of me so if you do see the phone that's what's going on there um, I don't uh, necessarily believe that um, there's anything wrong with that 
Uh, I believe you should utilize whatever you need to paint what you have uh, in front of you to paint. If you use uh, your phone, capture a picture, and you're using that as your reference, by all means, go ahead and use it. If you like to grid uh, your canvas before you um, uh, put your, uh, in, you know, your painting on and do your drawing with the grid, then you should do it that way. Some people uh, use the method where they'll draw onto a piece of paper and poke holes with a pin and use the carbon uh, method to uh, uh, form the outlines on their canvas. There's so many different ways that you can achieve the uh, the drawing that you want on your canvas prior to painting. That you know the there's no right way or wrong way as far as I'm concerned. It's what works best for you. Whatever you feel is going to achieve the, the best quality painting that you can make, then that's what you need to do. And I don't have any problems with that at all. Uh, there's so many different ways. Uh, and and then of course. Um, then you have your uh, painting technique that you're going to be putting on top of that. So here, uh, the palette that I was using, the colors were uh, titanium white. Uh, I had the um, uh, lemon yellow and the um, uh, uh, yellow ochre. And then, um, let's see, then it goes to uh, my red. I had a cadmium red. I had, uh, for green, I had my permanent yellow-green that I like to use. My two blues, I have a cool blue and a warm blue that I use. I had cerulean blue for my cool blue, and I had ultramarine blue for my warm blue. And uh, when I wanted to uh, put in my various greens, I would always use my permanent yellow-green and mix that in with my cool blue or my ultramarine blue to vary the different uh, values of green that I wanted and that always works good for me. So uh, those are the blues that I got there and then I had uh, Asphaltum which is a earth tone um, that's a uh, um, if you can if you take a look at the color that I used to draw in with my brush the hills and the, and the um, scenery in front of me if you look on the canvas now that is the color asphalt and that brownish color there that I was using. And then I have um, uh, ivory black. And I'm pretty sure those were the, the main colors that I was using. So it's not an extensive palette as far as colors go. Uh, the box that I have, the Sienna box, uh, is a small box. So that kind of almost forces me to limit my palette somewhat. And there is a, um, I'm going to look online, and because uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I saw that there is a, uh, a palette, extra palette you can buy for your uh, box that attaches to the tripod, and then I could actually extend my colors, um, uh, you know, make a much larger palette if I needed to. But to be honest with you, I kind of like using the limited palette. It forces me to... Uh, mix the colors that I that I see in front of me and uh, try to achieve uh, my values with those limited colors and I think that's good practice um, for me anyway that's what I like to do so here I was uh, I got the uh, clouds put in and and now I'm working on the hills in the background and so as I've uh, spoken in other videos about the uh, how you achieve that um, that atmosphere effect of things off in the distance, you have to remember what the uh, what colors are coming through the light spectrum uh, from the distance and, and, and how how they uh, how that changes as things get closer to you. So the hills in the background are going to have a purplish hue to them. And the reason for that is because the uh, light spectrum, the color yellow is actually non-existent off in the distance. That color is gone. So the only two colors that you're going to see uh, often from off in the distance or through, um, uh, through the, uh, the, 
atmosphere. It's actually what you're, you know, you're looking through all that air between you and the mountains. There's a lot of air between that, and that is what's actually eliminating the light. Uh, so, because uh, light has to travel through all that to get to your eyes. And uh, so you lose the color yellow. Uh, you're not you're not seeing the color yellow at all. So so there you are, that's why you don't see um, greens. Um, you can paint the green. You know your eye perceives the green, but it's actually not green. It's really uh, more of a purple color because the only two light colors that you're actually seeing through that atmosphere is the color red and the color blue. And if I'm not mistaken you will lose the color red next and then it'll be more of a blue and that's why you'll see um, if you look at a lot of paintings you'll notice that the mountains way way off in the distance will usually be a gray a light gray blue and uh, it really gives that nice effect of distance uh, between the viewer and the mountains that they're looking at in the painting and that's how you get that depth so you can see here I'm um, uh, making those hills in the background uh, more of a purplish color and then as those hills come closer then the color yellow starts to become more visible and greens you'll start to see the greens because as yellow mixes with blue you'll get the green so you can start making closer objects more green than the objects in the distance and that's the reasoning behind those choices of colors that I'm using uh, in my painting. And that's just for that atmospheric uh, effect. And you'll notice that um, a lot of amateur painters neglect that. And it's not that, you know, it, it might be because they just don't even know this. Um, but that's, that's the sign of uh, an amateur painter. That's one of the things you'll notice is they'll just, they don't get that, you know, how to get the atmosphere in their painting. And that comes with time. And it's something you learn along the way. And uh, if you uh, continue watching my videos, I hopefully uh, you'll learn something every time. Because uh, as I learn it, I like to pass it on, and so you learn it. Um, you know, it doesn't help. You know, I could keep it to myself, but why? It's so what, you know? It's... This is information for everybody, and uh, uh, how you uh, use that information is totally up to you, and if it makes you a great painter, then, then so be it. You know, good for you. So here you can see the uh, color green is becoming more prominent in the uh, hillside, and, um, uh, and I, I just kind of keep going back and forth. Um, as I look up, you know, I'm, I'm seeing... Uh, you know, there's some darker areas and some lighter areas, so I'm kind of playing with my values back and forth and uh, uh, changing it as I'm going. And it really didn't help uh, having a gray day um, because the things did change, you know, as the, as the day progressed. And it's a known fact that the light will change completely 100% the view in front of you the light will be totally different every pretty much like every seven minutes you have brand new view you like nothing is the same that it was seven minutes prior so as the day progresses you'll notice things you know you'll see uh, colors you'll see shadows you'll see lights that may or may not interest you on your view so you'll see you know like how the light was looking uh, at, on the view earlier in the morning you know piqued my interest but then something may happen where the sun could come out and hit a certain you know spot on the hillside and I'm like wow that's really neat I want to capture that so I will change my painting to match what I am viewing at that specific time and if I'm a, if I really like it and I'm afraid I'm gonna lose it because like I said it changes every seven minutes I will take a photo of that right away so that way I have that reference to look back on so I can say oh where was that light spot hitting oh okay I'll, and I'll look at the, the photo and go okay that's where it was and uh, you know then I can put it in my painting and so you know that's that's something I I'm, I think is a very good idea you know when you're when you're doing plein air painting 
because uh, you know, like I said, the day changes and progress. You know, as the day progresses, uh, certain things will pique your curiosity or pique your interest that you may like that you you know didn't notice earlier and you wanted in your painting. And that's what makes that's why you know that's what makes every painting different. It was amazing when we were looking at um, uh, everybody's paintings when they were done. We were all painting kind of like the same scene, but every painting was completely different. And that is, I think that's just, that always amazes me. How, you know, how things look through differently through everybody's eyes. So I am putting in, uh, you'll notice, you can see the uh, closer hillside, uh, more green. And the one thing that, uh, that I did not have in front of me while doing this painting was a focal point. So I didn't really know what I was going to do with that. The sun wasn't out. I didn't have, um, even in, if you notice in the picture um, in, to the uh, left there at the bottom of the screen, there wasn't a really a prominent uh, area that drew your eye any place you know in particular so I kind of had to invent a focal point something to uh, draw your eye into an area and I wanted that to be not in the center of my painting but more to the um, right uh, and it would be in uh, along the uh, if you broke the painting into thirds going uh, uh, vertical lines to the thirds. I want it in the last third of the painting and then if you break your painting in thirds again horizontally I wanted it in the uh, uh, lower third uh, from the bottom. So technically that would put it in the right corner, not the corner, but the, the um, um, the right side of the painting on the lower half. And that's kind of where I wanted to put my uh, focal point. That is, if you look up, um, there is uh, something that's called the golden mean. And if, uh, and that applies to uh, paintings, it applies to pretty much everything in nature. And that deals with uh, the composition of things. The golden mean is like a very aesthetically pleasing uh, uh, proportion to a picture, a painting, uh, anything that you're looking that's that, that you're looking in front of you. When it captures your interest, it's because something is in the golden mean that's drawing your attention. And the golden mean is I'll have to do a video on that uh, and explain that because it's something that. Um, I believe is very useful in how you set up your composition when before you actually do a painting and it's something that you should always keep in mind like when you're out playing your painting what where do you where do you want certain things in your painting where do you want that tree to be you want you know if that tree is going to be uh, a part of your focal point then you want it in the golden mean area of your painting so this way uh, compositionally it looks pleasing to the eye. And that is uh, key to, like when you're in a gallery and you're looking at paintings and something captures, you know, you're looking at painting and you're like, well, I really like this painting, but I don't know why. It's because the composition is, you know, there are things in the composition that are aesthetically pleasing to your eye. And it's, I can guarantee you, it's because something is in the golden mean that's drawing your uh, interest the focal point is in the right spot and that is always something I try to achieve with my paintings it's something that I uh, I teach and I try to show uh, uh, my students that you know the golden mean uh, that's where you want your focal point and sometimes uh, you get it sometimes you don't you know you just, um, it's not a rule but uh, it is a good thing to follow. There are great paintings out there that do not follow, you know, the rules. So, you know, there are uh, um, 
things that uh, you should do, but doesn't necessarily mean you have to do. You're not uh, forced in any way, shape, or form to do certain things when you're painting. As long as you're having fun and you're just, you know, moving the paint and capturing the scene in front of you, you know, whether you're using a, a, a loose uh, brush stroke uh, or you, you really uh, get into the details, it doesn't matter as long as you're out there and you're trying to uh, capture that scene and you're having fun doing it, then that's that's the that's the key to all of it. Now here I'm using uh, this is like a um, it's a it's not an eraser, but it is a rubber tipped. Um, it's not a brush. I don't actually know the name of it, but it has like a chiseled end on it, and it's and it has a handle like a brush. And I believe it's uh, you'll find them in the um, where you find sculpting tools. But it's uh, it it really is a great tool to use to. Uh, um, make uh, certain marks on the canvas you can actually remove paint with that rubber tip and achieve certain effects and results and I like to use that from time to time and uh, I do utilize that in a painting I'm currently working on that you'll see in uh, from planer to the studio and I'll explain that particular uh, tool that I'm using and how I utilize it and I'll show it you know, a little bit closer so that way um, you get an idea of what it is and if you wanted to pick one up and uh, play with it on your paintings and that then you know by all means I think that would be a you know something you should do so here I am you put I'm putting in the grapevines in front of me and uh, I put in all the little um, uh, the, the little uh, they're not stems but the, uh, uh, the trunks of the grapevines um, come up from the bottom. And here is where I was putting in my focal point. Here's what I was talking about. If you'll notice it's on the, uh, the right hand side, but the lower half of my painting. And I, this is the color, um, the lead tin yellow. And it's a very bright, very bright, uh, yellow and it mixes really well with the other colors so I do like to use that and so here I put in um, I just chose a spot and it said there's there's going to be like an area right here where there's going to be light emanating from this valley no explanation as to why there's light emanating from that valley but it looks kind of cool and it draws your eye right to that spot and so that's what I chose to do and when I work on this painting in the studio, um, I, I don't know if I'll necessarily keep that focal point there. I may move it up to uh, the sky area, maybe have the sun breaking through. I haven't really figured that out quite yet, um, but uh, I'm looking forward to uh, deciding you know, what it is I'm going to do with that. So this was a great day painting. I, I really liked how this painting came out. I was very happy with the atmosphere uh, effect that I got with this painting. Um, even though it was a gray day, uh, it gave me some great clouds uh, to work with. And um, I really like doing that. So if there's any questions you have about this particular painting or any painting in particular, or any of my techniques or anything at all, uh, make sure you leave it in the comment section down below and if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you are not subscribed to uh, my uh, YouTube channel make sure you subscribe uh, hit that uh, bell notification and uh, that way you'll know whenever a new video pops up uh, you'll be notified that that, is, uh, that has happened so yeah um, Again, uh, thank you for watching my videos, and uh, I enjoy making them for you. And you know, I really love I really love you guys watching my videos, and I, I have a good time doing this. And um, uh, hopefully, um, you know, we'll just continue doing this in the future. I know as uh, as my painting uh, progresses and I grow and learn, uh, my channel will change accordingly, and. Uh, 
Um, you know, you'll see new things and, and uh, better videos along the way. And I look forward to that. And I look forward to you uh, uh, being there to see that. So until next time, take it easy.